But when we looked at the foreign exchanges, uh, Jim, we looked at also the commodities. I want to just get your view on the euro. Does it surprise you that it actually hasn't done anything much, even though we've got this crisis in Greece and one which, even if it's resolved, only really solves it temporarily? Well, I'm delighted to see that. I, I, own, I still own the euro. It's one of the currencies I own. My long, main portfolio is long commodities and currencies. That's one of them. You know, the euro is a much better fundamental situation than the U.S. dollar, which I also own. I mean, Europe has a balance of trade surplus for the most part. It's not a large debtor entity. It's got some debtor entities within it. But no, the euro is not such a disaster. Yeah, I mean, what's your view of the Greek crisis? Because you've been on record with us, I think you're talking uh, to my colleagues in the U.S. earlier this month, saying that they should let the Greeks default, let them go, because you get an even stronger euro as a consequence. Rich, of course, throughout history, when countries get into this kind of situation, the longer you delay reality, the longer you delay the inevitable, the worse it is in the end. Look at Argentina 20 years ago, and we could go on and on. Let Greece go bankrupt. It is go bankrupt. Trying to bail them out or, or prolong the agony is going to, going to make it worse. But we're bailing out the banks, aren't we, rather than the country? We know the country is bust, uh, would, people would say. Very perceptive. Well done. That's why it's happening, you know. The people call up the French banks and the Greek and the German banks and say, you've got to save us. And so they're really bailing out European banks. They're not bailing out the Greeks. Very perceptive of you. Right, well, I didn't mean to make comment, Jim. Let's just uh, talk a little well, bit. Well, okay, then don't make comment. Let, I'll make. I uh, wish I'll make some more comment. I'll make some more comment. I'll make some more comment. Why should hard-working Dutch taxpayers or Finnish taxpayers suddenly wake up one day and get a call from their government saying you got to pay more taxes to pay for, to bail out some French banks or some German banks who made bad loans? I find that the height of irresponsibility, I find it the height of, of immorality. It's a terrible way to run a country, a nation, uh, an economy. It's not good for the world, and certainly not good for Europe. Oh, okay, well, you know, what do you have, if you have an orderly default, if there is such a thing, is that better in the long run than uh, short-term bailouts? Of course it is. I mean, go ahead and admit the problem now. Make people take their losses now, if you, in, in an orderly way, as you say. If you do it the other way, if you keep building up the debt and the debt gets worse over the next few years, when the market forces you to do it in a disorderly way, that's called panic, that's called chaos, and that's when you have things like 2008 and 2009, when everything collapses around you and there's not much anybody can do. Go ahead and do it now while it might be controlled a little better. Right, Jim, uh, let's talk about the dollar. You took a short position on it. Well, sorry, you took a long position on it, but in the short term. Now, with the uh, end of quantitative easing and its latest guys finishing, let's say, about uh, the end of this week, what impact does that have on the dollar? And at what point do you unwind that uh, long position with the dollar, given the fact that you think it's going to actually suffer and is in a structural decline in the long term? Well, I still own the dollar, as you, as you point out. Uh, there are things going on which could cause the dollar to rally. There may be a tax incentive for, uh, for American companies to bring money back into, into the U.S. There are things that could make the dollar go up for a while. I still own it. If it turns out in a few weeks or months or days that I'm wrong, then obviously I'll have to sell it and take a loss. But at the moment, I still own it, and I'm uh, not selling, not thinking about selling. All right. Where are you buying, then? I'm not buying much of anything, Rich. Uh, see, I, I, what, what I've done most recently, I shorted government bonds back June, June 10th, to be precise. I shorted some Microsoft calls yesterday. Uh, I'm not buying much of anything uh, these days. I'm mainly just watching. So far, my shorts are protecting me uh, in all of this unpleasantness. My, my, my shorts are going down, but so are my longs, but, except for my currencies. My currencies are doing fine. Right. Um, okay, but uh, commodities, we've seen a bit of uh, move to the downside here. But uh, you know, you're a long-term believer in that they will. They're in this sort of super cycle here. So you were looking at agriculture and looking at beaten down uh, parts of that particular complex. What did you find? 
Well, as I say, I'm mainly just watching. Uh, agriculture, the, the fundamental situation in agriculture has not improved. It continues to worsen. The uh, FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization, is going around the world pleading with people to understand. We have staggering agricultural p p problems facing us over the next decade. We don't even have enough farmers. So, Rich, we've got to do something or we're going to have no food at any price at times in the next few years. So I still own yeah, my agriculture. If I, if I found something to buy, I would buy it. Yeah, last time we talked, you said that all the farmers are going to be driving around in Lamborghinis. But let's just let the uh, move and just ask you one thing. What worries you the most at the moment? The Federal Reserve in the, in the United States. I mean, they don't have a clue about economics or currencies or, 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 or economics. They don't have a clue about much of anything. And they're, they're dangerous people. They're not doing good things for the world. And they will probably stop QE2. They've said it so many times they will. Uh, but when things start going wrong again in a few days, weeks, or months, they're going to start printing money again, Rich. And that's not good for the world. That's going to lead to more problems for all of us over the next decade. This is a serious problem facing us. So, I mean, can we just, does this go on infinite? And when do we actually solve this? And how do we solve it? The only way it's going to be solved, unfortunately, if you look at history, is when, when a crisis or a semi-crisis arises. We were talking before about Fred, uh, Greece, you know, if the market forces you to face reality, that's a crisis or a semi-crisis. Unfortunately, I don't see any politicians in the world with any influence who are being listened to and we're all just kicking the can down the road we'll say don't worry it's going to get better after the election after the election everybody says after the election it's not going to be solved rich until we have a big 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 problem it's sometime in the next few years jim rogers thanks a lot for that uh, jim rogers uh, keeping out uh, the uh, yeah the scouts motto though be prepared